You've never climbed that mountain before, and you're going to resist it. So I'm going to grab you by the scruff of the back of your hair, and I'm going to drag you up that thing, because I know how to get up there. This is the guy who billionaires and elite athletes call when they need to achieve the impossible. His previous clients, Kobe Bryant, Ronaldo, the Spanish royal family, and multiple billionaires. And some things he teaches seem weird at first, but they've been proven time and time again. So I tried to get in touch with him, and I did. Mr. Hendricks. Hello, Mr. Herman. How are you? I'm someone who works with highly ambitious people that are trying to tackle extremely difficult things. With his clients, he uses a very specific 90-day framework to achieve goals that seem impossible at first, but making them inevitable. Meet Todd Herman. 90 days is about the horizon line to the motivational factor in the human spirit. And this has been proven out by multiple studies. If we set a goal in the next 90 days of you getting to $10,000 a month, it's very close in timeline, immediately people go, boy, that would make a big difference to me right now. And I thought, well, that fits the 90 day goal series we just started. My plan was to steal this framework, share it with my friends and you guys, and maybe take credit for it. So I called over Jake and Brad, and I don't think they know what they signed up for. You give Daddy a big old hug and kiss. <laughs> we usually don't do this. No, no. This is all for the camera. I'm hungry. I wanted to bring you guys together to set some goals. Gathered here today to set some goals because we are driven. We <laughs> hate vowels. No vowels. What's the one goal that if we focus on in the next 90 days, we'll make the biggest impact on the world that you're ex existing in right now? I'm at 203. I love the way I look at 190, so I'm gonna get down to 190. I just turned 30 this year. There's just so much room for improvement, and I love improving all the time, so it's just like... You might say you are... I was driven! <laughs> but I had a very addictive personality. When I was 19, I had a knee surgery. They prescribed me way too much and way too strong of painkillers. I ended up getting hooked on painkillers for a few years. There were times where like I was just taking stuff, I didn't even know what it was. And then I was drinking and hooked on nicotine. Kind of like I was just trading addictions. I'm just like, I, I don't want it anymore. I don't want any more addictions. One of my first driven goals ever was to quit drinking alcohol. You made me bet $5,000 that I wouldn't drink. And I haven't drank since, so it's been almost a year. What? That's yeah. been almost a year ago. Yeah. If you had to pick one, which one would it be? How do you... How does it, how... One video every three weeks. I feel as like I, I've wasted so much potential over the past five years, and I want to break that habit. That's why we're here. The last three months of the year, we're going to... Do the things that we said we we're always gonna do. The last... gonna fix us. <laughs> nice. No, I'm not gonna do. Sh we're gonna become real men. Give us the driven pills. <laughs> well, I don't know what I'm doing either. So, but of course, I'm not gonna let my friends down. So Todd and I dove into his framework, and it makes sense why it's so effective. It's called OPP, and it's outcome, performance-based projects, and process. So outcome is the classic goal, making 10K per month. 190 is where I wanna be. And then you get into the performance-based projects. These are the ways, or this is the strategy that you're gonna go about hitting that. It's always about improving something. I'm gonna go from this to this. I'm gonna go from doing five push-ups to 15 push-ups by date. Now in Jake's case, that would be setting up a sustainable workout plan. I wanna get back to doing at least four times a week incorporate more activity mm. instead of like gym time. Doing like bi-weekly bouldering and then fr weekly frisbee. You definitely have potential with bouldering. Yeah. Yeah. Outcome goals, not as much control over them. Performance-based projects or performance goals, you have more control over them because you're the one who can do them. You're the one who can execute them. And then the process is who, what, when, where. It's the how part of it, which is basically scheduling it into the task calendar or the Google calendar for yourself. I need to take a day off every week. Better yet, two days off every week. I wanna take my weekends off. So Maybe even take three days off. You know what, four days. So I'm not working anymore. Because the more things that I can have Leon feel like he's in control of, I can keep you in a far more calm and confident state. We're closing feedback loops more rapidly. You're learning faster than everyone else. And if you're learning faster than everyone else, that's gonna also add to your confidence that you've got within your capabilities. Since launching the 90 day goal setting, 90 day goal series, we have all these new members that joined the community. Entrepreneurs, 
athletes, artists, literally from all over the world. And it's so exciting to see. There's an interesting conversation we had in one of our weekly accountability calls that I think may be helpful for some of you. Hello, everybody. I'm trying to hit my first 10K month. Publish two podcasts a week. Fully automate my lead generation. 10,000 subs. You can have a goal and a plan that motivates you for a few days, but what if you don't stick to it? Now, this is something I talked to Zane about. I have the goal and intention of not smoking any weed the month of October, November, and December. I've been smoking weed for two years now. I went through a successful startup exit and then I picked it up and it was a really nasty habit. I don't know, I've been able to successfully quit for like three days, but then there, the energy behind the why just seems to dissipate. What if you don't quit weed? What if you just keep going like this? I, it would be fine is the thing. It's like- It's just not a strong enough why it seems like yeah, to quit. Exactly. People don't change when they would like to. They change when they have to. Did you watch the Dickens process video that I made? You're in this middle zone where it's fine to smoke weed. Like what's gonna happen if you keep doing this for 10 years? What are you gonna miss out on? It would be so just aggressively straight up all the time seven. And I don't want to look back on my life tomorrow and realize that I've only ever done 70% of my capacity. I made a document, 100 reasons why. I actually made it a morning practice to just get really clear on that while I was going through a period where I just didn't feel that motivated. If every morning you sit down for 15 minutes and you remind yourself why this is important, I think it'll make your mind marinate in that. That's what really helped me, at least. I'd love to check in with you again. I'll be on the call. Awesome. I'll be around. Thank you so much, guys. See you next week. But even with a strong why, sometimes we doubt whether we have what it takes. And even Todd experienced this with his highest performing clients as well. But there is a way to trick your brain into overcoming obstacles that seem too big to handle. Well, if you think of that one goal that sits at the very top of that mountain, are you built right now with the way that you see yourself to go and achieve that thing? What's really tough for me is that I'm a very all or nothing person. I need to learn moderation because I'm horrible at moderation. Identity was something that the best athletes in the world would use in order to help them compete and win. I started building out a framework around what I called identity-based performance. And along with that became the method of building an alter ego for an athlete. There's a difference between who you are and what you are. What I am when I step on that court is I am that killer snake. They had a persona, they had a character, they had this way of being that they were taking out there. And so I simply just codified it. I'm the person who built the Black Mamba for Kobe Bryant back when he was going through his challenges in 2004. Serena Williams had her own character that she took out onto the court. Cristiano's, and his is just simply Ronaldo. What do you think would be an identity of you that would be able to do this long term? What if your identity was being an athlete? Like, first of all, how does that sound to you now? <laughs> Sounds silly. If I said like, oh, I'm an athlete, everyone would laugh at me, okay. including myself, because I'd be like, come on, let's get real. Mm -hmm. I'm not an athlete. What if starting from today, the way you look at yourself is, I'm an athlete. How would that change your behavior? And how would it affect your ability to be 180 to 190 pounds long-term sustainably? That goal is going to act as a force because just the very act of going after it and focusing on it, it's going to do something to you. Why don't we build the identity of the person that when they go after that, it's inevitable. So if you were 180 pounds, lean, working out four times a week, bouldering, would that make you an athlete? When you say it like that, then yeah, I guess so. I think a lot of people think change is by first getting the result and then you change your mind. It's like, oh, I guess I can do that. You have to change your mind first and then. Like when I uh, started YouTube, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't really consider myself a YouTuber really, but I did at the same time. I was like, this is, this is me now, this is what I do. And then I made it happen. The identity comes first. Yeah. And then reality catches up. It sounds like your goal is not just like these are just the metrics for the goal. This is how I know what I'm doing to, to reach the real goal is working. And the real goal is an identity shift. So you want to become an athlete? Yes. Yes. And an astronaut. If your goal is to become an athlete, we should maybe do something athletic. I would like to invite you to something. But, but to what? What are we doing? My leg just <laughs> fell asleep. So. I'm not an athlete. <laughs> Pins and needles. Have you ever heard of High Rocks? No. This looks like running. I don't, I don't run. You know who runs? Athletes. I want to be like more of like an e-sports athlete.
Hyrox combines both running and functional workout stations, where participants run one kilometer, that's like 14 ounces, followed by one functional workout station, repeated eight times. Immersive and electrifying race. Ooh. Electrifying? Yeah, I think that's just like a metaphor. This is what athletes do. We could fly out together, boys. That sounds and Brad, I want you in there too. I'm getting roped into this one now. Are you in? Let's do it. Yes! I'm in, boys. Let's do it. You're an athlete, Magic. I'm an athlete. Don't laugh, Brad. That's what he was worried about. Brad? I didn't even mean to, it just happened. Now, there was just one thing missing. When you quit alcohol, you said, hey, I'm gonna try to quit alcohol, and I told you, there's no try, either you do it or you don't. Let's put money on it. We can set up something like this here, too. No. Leon's it. trying to get um, funding for his channel. Accountability should mean inevitability. It's just a forcing function to ensure that you don't get in the way of the fucking goal that you said that you wanted. Brad, my hand is cold. Five grand. How much? I'll match Jake. Look at me now, Mom. I'm an athlete now. But I wonder if you can do it genuinely. I'm an athlete now. For real. I run races. Don't laugh, Brad. Don't. It's not, I'm not laughing at you. You're it's, it's, laughing no, at me. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing at him. I'm laughing with him. <laughs> I wasn't laughing. I'm a tickle monster now. <laughs> You will always be the enemy to your goal. That's why you need people around you that want to encourage you, that want to cheerlead you. 